Now, what are the other few other commands that you might uh, wanna look into? Uh, CD tilde command, I'll take you to the home, okay. Uh, there's a bunch of different shortcut commands that might, you might help if you're familiar with Linux. The other ls, you know that, ls command, but what does this, uh, anybody have an idea what this file would do? This is doing here is, instead of displaying the information on the screen, this is sending to a file called my file. My file. So if I do ls, that file should be there. So cat my file uh, should be displaying the ls command that I just ran. So what if I wanna append more information for this file? Another command that you could do is like, let's say I wanna run instead of ls command, I wanna do ls dash l command, but I wanna append to the same file. So if you add two appends, that should be able to add it to the same file without overriding. So if I didn't put the, uh, if I use only one append, it's gonna override the file. This is gonna append it to the current file. So if I do that, and now if I cat my file, uh, you should see that both the information, the regular cat information and extended ones, the listing ones was showing up here as well. So what are the other commands? That's the piping kind of command. The finger command is another one that you could use. Again, I use this on um, when I get a shell reverse shell to find, or find more information about a specific user. So I could uh, use this command to find out, hey, if this user is a root user, what kind of permission available for this user. So this is a pretty good command to find out uh, a little bit more information about it. So this, for an example, this use only have regular bone shell. This one has a bone again shell, uh, any messages, and a few other information. So that's a pretty good command. Uh, familiar with some of the regular expression, like the grip command I showed you, that's gonna help you on, uh, especially like, like looking for a files and flags with the regular expression, grab can help you tremendously. A uh, few other commands, the top command. This will show you current running. Um, this is kind of like the task manager, current uh, applications that are running. Okay, how much memory and CPU is being used. This is interactive, that's why you see keep seeing this is changing. But if you don't wanna use the command, uh, top command, you can use a PS command. For example, PS ELF, it's quite easy for me to remember. ELF is the one that uh, elf kinder. So what I did here was it shows all the running, but if I want to see, see the screen at a time, use the more command. It shows the user ID who's running, okay? Uh, if it's sleeping or not, a process ID, parent process ID. Uh, this is the priority. Remember we talked about the priority, the nice value, okay? Uh, how to increase the priority for a service, so decrease it. Okay, uh, start time, if it's connected through a terminal, okay, the command's being run. So this is again useful to find out what services are running uh, on the current system. Also sometimes there's binary files, so executables you could run here to find flags on some of the CTFs. And also useful to, as a pen test to find out if there's any uh, malicious applications are running on your system. So this is a good command, uh, PS command, what else? Um, so PS3 is another command. Uh, okay, it's just basically break down all the processes running into like a tree kind of a format so you could see all the information in there. Uh, so these are again like some of the basic commands guys, but you should be able to uh, look into like a little bit further details on some of the commands there. One of the ones I would is the kill command. Uh, if you do kill, there are a bunch of kill commands that you could use, okay? Kill is to basically kind of stop a process, okay? Uh, if you go into a probably the man would show you okay man kill because there are different kill messages when you do control C That's a kill command, but there are different kill messages. You could send. Uh, I think if I'm correct. They're starting from uh, 0 to 15, okay uh, This if you look online the kill manual for kill you see two different kill commands You could say so you need to find the process ID and then you can the kill command and different kill signals You want to send it? Uh -huh. So you could type kill and then the process ID that you find also what type of a, a kill command. Some of the ones like will write if there's anything on the memory, it'll close graciously, closing the file. Some of the kill commands that wipe, wipe out everything without uh, doing uh, the kill graciously. So this is the uh, chapter nine. So quick, quick, uh, quick introduction to some of the uh, basic commands. Um, Few other things I want to show here. I forgot about this uh, ch own command. Okay, so basically, let's say if I create a file that my file that my file that text right. If I can ls dash l, you could see what kind of permission assigned to this file. Okay, it's right now root owns it. Okay, uh, so the Linux assigned permission. The first bit here shows up. It's a directory of files. So if you see a d, it's a directory. The first three section read, write, execute. So this read has four. 
number two, the four, two, and one. So seven is the total number you can assign to each section. So there's read, write, and execute. Read has a value of four, write has a value of two, uh, execute has a value of one. Right now, read, write is assigned for the user. The group has only read, okay? And the last section is the others. So how can I change this? Okay, you could use chmod command, okay? If I use chmod, and if I give 777, okay, for the my file, it's not a good thing to do here because what it's doing is I'm giving the others full read, write, and execute. So if I do ls-l, and then I'm gonna do only find the uh, my file, okay? Uh, see if I can grab this, grab uh, my file. So what I did was now I did was I assigned read write executes for all the three files. Okay. So the others, anybody logging into the system will have full access to this file because this is read write execute. The seven means remember four is read, uh, write is four, execute is one. That's how I got the command. Another one you could do is like ch own. So if I want to change the ownership of this file, what I can do here is like say I want to change the ownership to deep for my file. Okay. So now what I did was if I go back, grab the file, now the owner is the, not the root. Okay, so that's how we change the ownership of the file and, and change the permission of the file. The other things, other few commands that you could be familiar with is the foreground and the background command. So basically, if you want to start a job, like let's say I want to open a, uh, Nano on the background, okay, uh, I can type VG Nano, okay. Is the job is not running, so if you had to be execute the job, so you can send the um, the application to run on the foreground or the background. So what basically what this does is like like sometimes when you open a command, right, the command prompt get locked. So if you run it on the background, it'll release the command prompt, so you could use it. Those are some of the things that I've encountered uh, when you're uh, working with Linux. Okay. The other commands you guys know, user add. I, I mentioned that if you want to add a user, you could use that once you get shell access. Um, users command okay this is basically users will sh uh, show you what users logged in right now okay uh, you can use who command to find out who logged into the system for more information about what time they logged in uh, some of those information uh, so those those are some common commands that I could spend a whole semester teaching you guys the Linux but this is just to give you guys some basic introduction again I do highly recommend we really get really good get really good at using Linux if you want to be going into the pen testing or any other type using some of the basic commands would be really good okay let's now jump in and look at some of the other directory um, right now if I look at it on uh, look in here I should be in my root directory so if you do ls l this is the root users home directory and if you look at the permissions you see here this is not accessible by most the other users because uh, permissions are only assigned to the root uh, root user uh, so again, if you uh, as a pen tester uh, got the root access through a shell, this is another directory that you might want to check to find out what's going on, what's in there, um, especially on a CTF, sometimes uh, people hide the flags in here. The other directory, we're going to look at it here, CD bin directory. This is where all the binary files are saved. For an example, uh, if I look at it here, you should be able to find some of the common commands that you use here. Uh, there's a lot of files in here. Uh, let's say if I can filter this out really quick. Like for an example, I want to show you guys. Um, I'm going to do more command here. Quickly, I was going to say that uh, I could have grabbed it here. Yeah, let's do that really quick. What I want to show was, um, let's say, if, uh, common commands like ls cd cat all those commands that we've been using here uh, it's going to be in this um, in this directory so if i want to try to see if i can grab this it might work ls okay bash grip command not oh, uh, spell grip right okay i didn't spell it right that's what was it um, yeah okay so um so what i did here was uh, i was trying to like find like this is scrapping everything uh, anyway so this should i should have the ls command somewhere here there we go so there are a bunch of other ls commands so what I should have, but i should have done it start with l 
yeah let's do that to show you guys if i can get this to work so and again grab is another command that you can use for like with the regular expression so if i want to do this to say hey i want to start everything start with l and ending with s so you could use this extra characters you might have to use extended grabs for some of these commands with uppercase e Okay, so what I did here was I used the grep command since it shows all the commands because the bin directory has all the regular commands that we mostly use and there's a lot of shell commands that stored in this directory but I wanted to find uh, the ls command so the, the carrot here gonna say hey it's find all the words start with l and uh, find all the words uh, and the dollar sign will find everything that ends with s so this is the ls command so it's in the bin directory so I'm glad that worked I remember that uh, so the next thing is the spin directory. So if I go back, uh, this is very similar to the other directory. Um, CD spin. Okay, this is very similar to the other directory. But what you have here is uh, the commands that are not intended for like regular users logging into a Linux system, such as like making a file uh, for program file utilities. Uh, we can quickly look at this again. There's a lot here. For an example, let's see if I can PV scan. That's the scan that used to uh, check reboot uh, raw data files. And there's there's a lot here that again um, FSCK. That's the file system uh, when you're formatting a disk. Uh, that command. So here there are a lot of utilities here that again um, not most regular users would use here. Other files going to be here. So we did look at the uh, Etsy directory. So the other uh, important directory for us as pen testers and uh, regular Linux users you should look is the the dev directory. Okay, this is where all the device drive devices are connected. So if I go to the dev directory, and I should be able to see again. There's a lot here. Uh, what I want to find again, I could do uh, again a grab uh, common things like your hard disk drives. Okay, bunch of different terminal sessions. This is where you will find all these ones like HDA1, you'll find HDA2, those are the different disk drives attached to your system. So if I go to yeah the disks directory here and if I go there I should be able to see the uh, disk. Okay, if I do ls, um, bit by partition by path. Uh, normally it's on HDA FD1, uh, depending on the distribution this might have changed. Uh, yeah, I, I see it up here. So this is the SDA one. So depending on the directory, if you use a um, type of a drive such as SCSI disk, you should uh, this drive start with S. So you should see the drives. So if you want to go and check the drives when you're par partitioning or find more information, this is where you normally come. So I'm going to go back, go back, clear the screen. Okay, another directory is the boot directory. Uh, I'm sure you can guys can guess what's going to be here on this directory most of the files that critical files for booting is going to be here depending on your bootloader it will look on this directory and find the files that are uh, needed to uh, successfully start the system you might like, like you're seeing here you're not seeing my directory because the grub is the folder you need to go log, log in to find out because this uh, kali machine using the grub bootloader what else now uh, use the directory and again don't confuse this one which i also used to get confused with this directory this is not the users directory this is the directory contain like bunch of subdirectories that users on the system can use. Okay, there's gonna be like depending on how many users, this directory can get really big. Uh, like manual pages, you can find here. Uh, directory has number of other important directories here. If I like to use a bin directory, is another one that um, I've seen come in handy. Uh, some commands that use for the local user can find here. So if I do ls, like there's a bin directory. Not the same bin directory we looked at on the root directory. This is the different different directory. Uh, any shared documents gonna be fine on the shared directory if you've shared files. Okay. Again, that's another place I've seen flun flags. Use local. This is the uh, directory that holds the software installed um, for local users to use. Okay. And then what else? Oh, this is another directory I want to show. Cd var. Okay, very important directory. A reason is I want to show that um, this directory, other than having the um, most of the, well, do ls, most of the important directory here is the var log directory. So I'm going to go into the log directory. Where is it? Yeah, log. Okay. Here you can find all the log files related to the system. For an example, if you want to find the log files related to the boot, you could cat that file, boot.log. Okay. Uh, I've done this because I had sort of trouble, I had a troubleshoot. Uh, 
uh, some of the logging issues and this shows up everything and you probably have seen right like loading regular loading okay file what happens uh, so this is where you can find come and find out what happens during the boot and the all every every time it boots it creates this log so troubleshooting and any other information that you can find here it's a very good place to look in here uh, other than that depending on different applications they will write the logs here okay uh, Crohn's log um, different application logs sometimes you will find the flags here too hidden on some of these flags uh, when you're doing CTFs type uh, competitions again all the log files you will find in this directory now uh, let's go back another two directories up I could do this one too uh, here I want to show another directory is um, clear this out the proc directory CD proc okay so this directory contains the uh, bunch there's going to be a bunch of other subdirectories information stored on your local disk okay and this is where you will find like for an example if you want to find the CPU info memory info so what I could do here is like I could CAD um, let's find what CPU uh, in here if I type CPU info I can find the uh, information related to current CPU since this is a virtual machine you should still uh, the bugs shows up here yeah, that's pretty nice I didn't notice it but what I want to show you here is the uh, the CPU. Uh, good information is basically we are saying the updates that the CPU might be susceptible for the CPU meltdown of Spectra. Okay, uh, so this is my CPU info. What kind of CPU I'm running? Okay, how many cores I have assigned? Same thing you can do for C. Uh, I could uh, cat um, cat the mem info. That give you the memory information. So other than that, there are other information here. The proc stat directory has interesting statistics about the system so you might want to look into that uh, you can use the version proc uh, cat version to find what kind of version of uh, we are running what kind of Linux kernel okay all those information so these are the some of the common directories that you should be familiar with it I do highly recommend going around and playing with some of the directories to get be familiar with it especially when we come into the final exam time you need to be familiar with navigate and find some of these directories Hello everyone, uh, this week is going to be uh, two chapters we are covering, Introduction to Linux and Linux Hacking. So Introduction to Linux, I think most of you guys are familiar with the system, so this is going to be an overview. So if you're familiar with it, you're okay to skip it, but if you think you need to refresh on Linux, I would recommend uh, going on some of these uh, videos I'm recording for this week. So the first thing we need to do here is once we are on a Linux system, so you guys know some of the basic, uh, basic commands, right? So PWD is the command that you can use to uh, check your current directory right? for an example I'm on the current directory <clears throat> you can also see the Linux starting from the forward slash that's the root directory uh, some there are some of the directories we hear that we need to have a clear idea of uh, them the reason is like when you're doing pen testing some of these directories might uh, keep some of the important information that we are going to look into so one of the first things that we are going to look in here is the uh, let me do a ls command so common directories we will be looking here at uh, the home directory I don't want to spend too much time on home directory uh, let's go in there really quick so I can show you what's going on home directory basically have all the users so right now I don't have any users in here so I haven't created it for regular Linux system this is where all the users are going to be but don't get confused if I have a user here called deep and inside deep there's going to be another folder that's kind of like the home directory for that specific user every the home directory right now you're in this one is the home directory for everybody okay so this directory is going to be uh, hosting all the housing all the users when you create a system on a Linux system and the other directory that you need to be familiar with is um, let me go back here clear the screen um, do ls one of the first directories I would recommend being familiar with is the etc directory. Okay, so cd etc. You probably have seen this directory. Again, see what happens. I need to specify the full path on Linux system. Even though the directory is there, I need to tell where I'm going in. Uh, full path o dot to specify you on the current directory. So you guys are again familiar with this. So what does etc directory have? Uh, you probably if I do this it's going to show up so much so what we do is ls does more so only see specific directories so this is probably the most interesting place uh, that you will look for 
especially for pen testing because you might want to see uh, where the passwords and where the usernames are existed. Other than that, there are some other information on the REST directory that uh, there's a lot of uh, common configuration files you will find here. For an example, you guys see here Apache. So if you have a web server running here, this is where you come and configure that directory. Um, all the applications such as DHCP settings, uh, uh, for an example, network settings, uh, all those uh, information is going to be here. But the two common ones for pen testing is the ones that you need to pay attention is the, I'm going to go to CD from this directory to the, the directory I'm looking here is the password directory. It's called PSSWD. Okay. Uh, should be here. Um, CD. Okay, again, full path, right? Uh, forward slash, or from right now, I should be able to do PSSWD. Why it's not there? Let's see what's going on. Uh, let's go all the way to P. Uh, I could have done, um, I could have done a filtering here too. G H I J K L M N O P. Uh, it should be here, okay. Oh. The reason is good this is a good again password is not a directory it's a file that's why i didn't get to see it so if i do cat passwd okay uh, i should be there okay uh, but it, wh why this is important for us is as this is where all the usernames are saved in so probably you remember from your previous um encounters or anything that linux has changed the passwords are not actually saved here so quick information here uh, for an example, if we, there are some service accounts here, so the accounts going to be starting from zero to thousand, going to be mostly related to the Linux service account. Anything from above is going to be related to user accounts. So for an example, let's say I create a user add is the command to add a user and add a user called deep. Okay. So if I add this user, if I come back here and do cat again p a s s w g what you would see here the deep users created now is this is the first user it's going to start from thousand again this is a configuration file uh, you can go ahead and uh, configure this to starting from specific um, uh, number and again what you need to do here is this is the group permission the user permission x refers to the passwords going to be saved on a different directory okay you don't see the password here and this is the path for my home directory remember i talked about the home and everybody's user account is going to be inside that home directory and the shell that default shell that be assigned to my user account so this is going to be a bash uh, a bash shell be a regular shell so this is going to be assigned to my account so you can change this again if you want to assign a different shell and there's there's a lot this is again like i said this is a quick intro so again why we need to look, come here if you got an access to a linux system you can come here and see what accounts are assigned and what's the service accounts available for an example root account should be all the way on the top here even though this is a uh, user account roots always get the zero and zero and path okay uh, root has the bash shell okay a regular shell is the cron shell if you see SHA, sh if you see ba that's the bash shell okay and these are all different service account Re remember like just like windows or linux or mac any other operating system all the services need to have an account run them right for and so this is going to what you see here is an example would be uh debian let's see i'm gonna find some a good service here can Thing. I just saw some here a mail like right mail application needs a mail use account so that's what you see here ignore the email messages pop-ups uh, so the other directory I want to quickly show here is the um, cat and shadow okay shadow okay the shadow directory is where the usernames and passwords are saved here right now what you see here my password's gonna have exclamation mark because I didn't set up a password for this user account, okay? And again, here, you're gonna see all the user accounts and their passwords. Again, if you see a star, that means these are already assigned a system password, okay? That's why you don't see them. Again, click on etc directory. On the next video, we'll look at the, the bin directory. Okay, and uh, what I've looked at here was the, the other important directory here is the cat groups directory. This is where all the uh, all the 
uh, groups are created. So for an example, if you see that deep directory, deep, uh, deep file here, that's the user account I created. When you create a user on a Linux machine, what it does is create a group using the same name as deep. So the my group's gonna be deep, my username's gonna be deep, my and this is the user group, this is the group ID. Group IDs and user IDs, they're gonna match as well. Remember I told you they're all starting from 1000. And these are all the other groups created for the service accounts. Again, numbers are between 1000, those are all service accounts. Uh, what else in the ETC directory? Uh, another directory is uh, clear here. Uh, I'm not sure if we can cat this one. I think this is a directory. Uh, INIT, okay. INITD is the init.d directory. These are all the daemons are running on, uh, all the system service daemons are running on this directory. Init.b, um, init it should be over here, it's in two, in init tab, okay. Should be two tabs here, I'm not sure why that one's not showing up here. That's another directory uh, where all the configuration files are there. This is very important because this is where all your application configurations are there. You can look at it to change any programs you want to um, start at the big startup files. Like for example, I don't know if you guys remember when you're setting up the Docker container. If you want the Docker container to start when the system start, this is where you need to go and edit the file or you can enable it manually, okay? So the Initab files have a bunch of different entries, okay? One of the ones is the label. It's a unique identifier to find the specific services label. The run level, there are different run level that uh, Linux systems has. Run level is a, like different services have different uh, categories of levels of run. They have different priorities. And the process is uh, where like when the system's booting up, it's execute to a different run level. Okay, go to run level one, run level two, okay. Uh, and there again, like I said, it's supposed to start at boot. There's a there's a boot wait command. That's the process that wait for wait to terminate before going into the next entry. Okay, and there are default in it default. This is where it's gonna uh, enter initially to the highest number of the run level because the run level has priorities. Okay, depending on the priority, uh, some system services have higher priority and some system services has lower priority. We call this is a nice value. You can assign a nice value to each different. Um, each different um, services. Um, let's see if I can uh, really quickly show the nice value here. Uh, yeah, see the nice here. If we do nice dash dash help, uh, you can tell what this command is used to adjust the nice value. By default, the 20 uh, is the most favorable, okay? Uh, but you could increase it or decrease it depending on to give a higher priority for a service. So other than that, uh, let's say we looked at the shadow, we looked at the group, we looked at the any tab, okay? Um, few other uh, ones we could look at it here is and um, we can look at the init directory cd in nit i'm sure if, yeah ls okay there's nothing in here okay this right now probably there's nothing in here but if you go to um cd dot init dot dot uh where is it init 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 dot d directory ls here you should see these are a bunch of different services running here so if i cat apache uh, uh, 2 is there okay you could see some of the settings set up for uh, set up files here uh, for the apache uh, there's a lot here you can spend some time reading a little bit more de uh, details in here about um, specific directory but i want to give you a quick quick demo on etc a few other things on etc directory i'm going to go back to directory cd dot dot so i'm sure you guys are familiar with this command uh motd directory okay uh, i think this is probably a file okay motd yeah if you see here motd to stand for message of the day this is where when you do a service scan or when you log into a linux machine through a uh, shell or through Telnet, remember this message pops up at the beginning saying version is running. When you do a, a scan, this shows up. Message of the day is where it's telling what kind of systems running, give a warning message. Those are the things that you should see on the ETC directory, not ETC directory, change. If you want to change the message of the day, this is where you should go and change it. So that's a little video on the ETC directory and we'll jump into another directory in a bit.